Right up there with mac and cheese, Lucky Charms, instant noodles, and other raging American snack foods, Doritos definitely have their place in the rich, colorful history of this channel. That gigantic Dorito burrito comes to mind. All the times we've fried various things that were coated in Doritos, those greasy cheese squares. But today, I thought it'd be fun to add to that history. So I went on over to Instagram, I asked you guys for some Dorito-charged suggestions, and you guys did not disappoint. This is gonna be a wild slate of recipes, so let's get right into it. And we're off to the races. There is no starting slow here today, because we're gonna head on over to the Tastemade channel and remake their Dorito Bloody Mary. I grabbed some vodka and nacho cheese Doritos, tomato juice, paprika, and celery salt, Worcestershire sauce and black pepper, horseradish, Tabasco, some green olives, and celery. Shoutouts to the good people over at Tastemade, by the way. They were the only mega channel that were making food videos like this that kind of acknowledged the presence of YouTubers like me. If you remember, they sent me a little care package a couple years ago, and I still use some of that stuff to this day. And that may be where the good praises end, because this concoction looks like something out of another realm of hell, at least to me. Evidently, Sandra Lee was behind the camera making this video for them, because they used four ounces of vodka, and when I tried to do the same... Oh my god! That's not right. Four ounces is a half cup of vodka that they used in this. That's like two and a half shots. I didn't know I was bartending for World of T-shirts. Maybe they were saving time and making two different drinks for two different people in the same glass. This is a lot of work after all, because it also gets a good amount of all of the spices, lots of Tabasco and horseradish. It gets poured over a highball glass with a little garnish, and let's see how this goes. Is there a term for when you're morbidly curious about something, but in an excited manner? Uh, morbidly excited? It's kind of how I'm feeling. Oh. Woo, my God. It's a good thing I didn't have to drive anywhere today. Jesus Christ. It's a strong drink. Um, you could taste every bit of how alcoholic it is, even though there's so many other strong flavors going on. But surprisingly, my biggest knock on this is I don't like to chew my drink. There is so much sediment in here. The chips, the horseradish, even like the spices, I feel like you get a little bit of graininess from. I wouldn't classify it as disgusting or inedible, but you gotta be a certain kind of person to enjoy this. And it's not me. Ugh. Well, there's gonna be no breaks in the chaos of this one, because next up, we've got this Dorito-encrusted taco. I grabbed some Cool Ranch Doritos and barbecue sauce, ground beef, and a gigantic salsa. It was on sale. Shredded cheddar cheese and taco seasoning, iceberg lettuce, sour cream, some flour tortillas, and onion and cilantro. Let me just start by saying, obviously, these are gonna be nothing close to authentic Mexican tacos, although after hearing the name of them, I don't know how you thought they would be. They are very much giving white people taco night, especially the way we cook the meat with just onions and that jar of taco seasoning. We chop up some fresh cilantro, then we slice some iceberg lettuce, and then coat our flour tortillas in barbecue sauce, chopped up Dorito chips, and then bake that. I've known that I was gonna remake this recipe for quite a while now. I posted that Instagram picture a couple days ago, and I still have yet to figure out if they are going for a mock Doritos Loco taco from Taco Bell, or if this was just a unique creation they pulled out of their unhinged brain. But for what it's worth, the process worked exactly as advertised. The flour tortillas were very easy to coat, they firmed up in a 350 degree oven in about 15 minutes. They were able to stand up on their own. They seemed very structurally sound when I was loading them with all my toppings. I can't say that I've made anything that's ever resembled this in my life before, but it looks spot on to the recipe, so let's give it a taste. It's safe to say I underestimated the width of the grates of my oven rack, or overestimated the width of my mouth, either one.
I don't know. Uh, the inside of this is exactly as I expected it. It's very run-of-the-mill, but it doesn't help that I much prefer a soft tortilla, just lightly warmed up over a hard taco shell like this. And the barbecue sauce is just way out of place. It's already a very sweet sauce. There's a lot of sugar in there, but now that it's reduced basically and like lacquered on there, it is just way too sweet. And why are we using barbecue sauce anyway? There's gotta be a better adhesive to use that actually goes with a taco. It's a very cool concept, I'll give them that. If you love hard taco shells, I would say give it a go. Um, maybe brainstorm, find some other kind of sauce to dip it in. But this as it stands, what's sitting in front of me, doesn't get a thumbs down, maybe like a sideways thumb. <laughs> Although I wasn't completely blown away by that taco, I still have high hopes for that technique. And it got me thinking, what other types of foods could you encrust in pulverized Doritos? And when I came across this one, the Dorito grilled cheese from the Burger Dude, I think it fits that bill perfect. I grabbed some of the sweet chili Doritos and some thick cut bread, American cheese, and butter. I'll just come clean here. I have seen this video before. I'm sure a bunch of you guys have sent it my way but I never felt the need to test it because it's very simple. I think my subconscious makes me feel like all the recipes I test have to be complex or involved for some reason. So when I'm making a grilled cheese, it has to have some kind of intricate dipping sauce, some kind of garlic aioli on the side, I don't know. I should really try to dump that mindset though. There's nothing wrong with simple recipes. Some may say 2016 BuzzFeed-esque recipes. In fact, I wouldn't at all be surprised if I scrolled back on the Tasty page and found them blitzing some Doritos, using some butter to adhere them on some thick bread, brown up both sides, and make sure to get that cheese nice and melty over a low and slow heat, get that beautiful cheese pull, and then absolutely shove it in your face. Yes. This is absolutely incredible, and for many reasons, I feel like it's way more practical and logical than the taco. First of all, the flavor is amazing, and it makes so much sense. Um, you could eat any flavored Dorito on the side of a grilled cheese, so combining them together in the same bite makes perfect sense to me, way more than a taco and a barbecue sauce flavor. And the amount of crunch that the chips add um, in the sandwich that normally wouldn't have that much. It's just so good. And the way they get all buttery and toasty on that skillet. This gets my Santa approval easily. If you couldn't tell that already based on how much I've eaten. And for the grand finale, we have a wild one, at least to my sheltered brain. It is yet another insanely tasty looking Mexican street food. Shoutouts to everybody who wanted me to do this on my Instagram, especially Fields, for essentially guiding me on my journey to discover the Dory Locos. I grabbed some chamoy and pickled pork rinds, tahine, and a small bag of Doritos, a green cabbage and a lime, some gummy bears, and a cucumber. If you're unfamiliar like I was, the Dori Loco is a very popular street food in many parts of Mexico. It's been around for over a decade now. At its base is a small bag of your favorite type of Dorito, and then piled on top of those chips are a wildly customizable array of ingredients. I compiled my list of ingredients based on what seems like requirements in all of the examples I've seen, such as the cabbage, the cucumber, the chamoy, tahine, and the lime juice, as well as some optional stuff that seemed to intrigue me, while also leaving out some other optional stuff like um, peanuts, for obvious reasons. And somehow, although I've never made or experienced this dish, just looking at it and maybe smelling it a little bit has my mouth salivating beyond belief. The colors going on here were so wild and pretty, so for one last time today, let's give this one a taste. <sighs> what, what a wild combination of smells. Um, it's overwhelmingly vinegar because of the pickled pork, but you also get a lot of that vegetal, cabbage-y, cucumber smell, a little hint of gummies maybe. What I just experienced, the absolute assault on my tongue and taste buds, has to be the closest anybody's gotten to what a Victorian child would feel like if they tried a warhead. Or a Chris Morocco, for that matter. It is all up on you. And I don't even think I got a lot of lime or one of the uh, pork rinds in the bite. Although, it's kinda freaking me out.
I didn't actually mind the flavor of that. I like vinegar and pickled foods, but the texture is not for me. It's kind of like a really gelatinous, fatty strip of something. But the rest of this, I could get down with. I love cabbage and cucumber. I love how intensely flavored everything is with the lime, the really chamoy saturated chips. Mm. Come to think of it, I'd be willing to bet that this would do some serious damage to a Victorian child or like a medieval peasant. And maybe even my own taste buds, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision.